Back in 2018, I got a chance to look at the Atlas Orion A set of two times anamorphic lenses. Today, we are looking at the long-awaited B set. The B set of the Atlas Anamorphics consists of 32, 50, and 80 mm. These focal lengths now fill Atlas's set of two times anamorphic lenses quite nicely. With a 25 mm also around the corner, there will be seven focal lengths ranging from 25 through to 100. This new B set features the same solid build quality as the A set. Iris and focus movements are smooth and consistent, with focus speed being on the slightly looser side. They range in weight depending on the mount, but the PL set we had weighed in pretty closely when compared to the A set. The 32mm weighs roughly 2.2 kilograms or 4.85 pounds. The 50 is around 2.4 kilograms or 5.3 pounds. And the 80mm is around 2.6 kilograms or 5.73 pounds. The whole B set keeps the same T2 aperture like the A set. With them being part of the overall Orion set, they share a lot of similarities with the A set. That being the consistent gear placement for lens swaps when using motors, the same 114mm front diameter for clamp on matte boxes, a 270 degree focus ring rotation, and a 14 blade iris. They will have pretty decent close focuses for anamorphics. The 32mm close focus is at 1.75 foot, the 50 at 2.5 foot, and the 80 at 3 foot. This sits in pretty neatly with the A set's data also. You can also switch between EF, PL, E and MFT mount. So no matter what the camera you wanted to pair these with, you will be able to. Atlas have also made an expander for their lenses, so you can use them on larger format cameras. This expander increases the image circle by 1.6 times, which cuts your light by one and a third stop. There's definitely a loss in resolution between the two, but it's not a bad option if you're wanting to use these lenses on a larger format camera, like the Red Monstro or Alexa LF. The expander will be retailing for around $2,000. We also managed to shoot some more creative test shots. We shot these on our Red Gemini in 5K 6x5 mode. For our more controlled tests, we shot in a mix of Red Gemini and Monstro. We used Gemini for the test shots with me in front of the camera and the Monstro for the charts. Let's start by looking at the bokeh. The 32mm wide open has teardrop shaped bokeh with a decent amount of CA around it. As you stop down, the shape gets better with the bottom becoming similar in shape to the top. However, even when stopped down to T5.6, some green fringing is still visible and you can start to see some starring at 5.6 also. The 50mm wide open has incredibly triangular bokeh. It also shows some of the same CA like the 32mm. Again, like the 32, as you stop down, the bokeh gets more oval shaped and CA is reduced. Like the 32 again, you can start to see some styring, however, you start to see it around T4 this time. The 80mm isn't quite as triangular as the previous two, but does showcase some cutting. There is also some green fringing visible through to 1.5.6. The cutting and shape get better as you stop the lens down. Like the previous lenses, this lens seems to look best at around T4 when it comes to bokeh. But let's move on to looking at some of the anamorphic flare goodness. For the flare, we have both a data light DAD7 set to 3200K shooting down the barrel of the lens and an LED torch. Wide open, the 32mm showcases the saturated blue flares that you expect from the Atlas Ride series. There is also a little bit of rainbow flaring as well as some horizontal artifacts. As you stop down, the height of the flare reduces, but characteristics stay similar with the rainbow flare being reduced most. The 50mm is a similar story. Flares look pretty close to the 32mm. Again, as you stop down, the height of the flare is reduced. The 80mm suffers from a bit more internal reflection than the others in the set and has a lot more circular artifacting. Again, as you stop down, the height of the flare is reduced. All three lenses suffer from veiling glare, and as you stop down, each lens starts starring more and more around the torch. 
Overall though, the Atlases do a great job at keeping the flare looking consistent throughout these three new lenses. The flares look really nice overall though. I personally prefer a slightly more desaturated flare, but I do like the way these look. Personally, I would say past T4, 5, 6 is where I like these the most though. Breathing is synonymous with anamorphic lenses, so let's take a look at how these look. For these, we stopped all of the lenses down to T5.6 and racked focus through close to infinity. The 32mm has a lot of breathing when racking through the focus range. You can also see my face changing in shape as the image is stretched horizontally. This is a common artifact of anamorphic lenses um, that a lot of DOPs really like. Both the 50 and 80mm showcase a similar amount of breathing with the same horizontal stretching occurring. This isn't strictly a bad thing as, as this is something that you should expect when using most anamorphic lenses. The whole Atlas series is designed to cover a 31mm image circle, which will cover most modern Super 35 anamorphic shooting formats. We also managed to grab some stills using our lens coverage tool setup, which you'll be able to see these lenses on our tool using the link up here. We can see from our coverage tests that the 32mm suffers from hard vignette wide open when paired with the 31.74 image circle needed for the Sony Venice in 4K 6x5 mode. However, when stopped down, this does improve. They also perform better at infinity than close focus. Both the 50 and 80mm cover this format well with only a small amount of light fall off towards the corners but no hard vignetting. For our chart tests, we shot using our Red Ranger Monstro in full 8K mode so we could crop in to the image after the fact. Looking at how these lenses render detail is quite interesting. Wide open, the 32mm has a decent amount of resolution fall off towards the edges of its frame. However, in the centre it renders well but not amazingly. There is a range of CA across the entire frame and contrast is low. However, when stopped down to T2.8, you can instantly see the difference. When you stop down to T4, things really start to sharpen and clean up. There is still some fall off towards the corners, which a lot of people want, but they do resolve well in the centre. This is a similar story with the 50 and the 80, both being fairly soft wide open and then sharpening up around T4. However, I would say the 80 has the best corner performance out of the three. So overall, I'd say if sharpness is important, you'll need to be stopping down to at least T4 to get some good performance. Heavy distortion is another characteristic that is heavily associated with anamorphic shooting. The 32mm does have some barrel distortion, but considering the field of view you are getting, this is definitely an acceptable amount, and when compared to other new options on the market, it's far better controlled. I was surprised how unaffected my face was when it reached the corners of the frame while panning. The 50mm shows a tiny bit of barrel distortion, but not much at all, and the 80mm is pretty rock solid with almost no distortion. Alice have managed to make another set of fantastic 2x anamorphic lenses especially when you consider that they are around £8,000 per lens. They aren't perfect wide open, but there aren't many anamorphics that are. Having the ability to shoot T2 is great for low light scenarios, but with how many modern cinema cameras now have dual native ISO sensors, I would say you're better off stopping down to T4 or 5.6. Here, each focal length sharpens up, bokeh shape and rendering is more pleasing, flares are better controlled, and you're going to make you or your AC's job a lot easier. Well, let us know what you think of the lenses in the comments below, and for future reviews, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching.